Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you guys know the deal on this channel, man. We must continue to set the record straight, stop the lies, stop the narratives, stop them from rewriting the history, you guys. You guys know the deal, man. We must continue to do this. Stand up. And in this video, we're going to talk about how Michael Jordan raised the IQ of the players around him, of his teammates, how he raised their IQ, right? We've talked many, many times on this channel about Michael Jordan making the players around him better, right? But Michael Jordan also raised the IQ of the players around him, which made the players around him better, right? Which helped them help him, right? We're going to talk about it in this video, guys. And I want to thank you guys, everyone across the world, everyone across the states has been supporting my channel. I am truly, truly humble, guys, but all support for real, man. It means a lot, guys. Once again, shout out to everybody in the membership. Like I said, all you guys, all the true basketball fans, man, I am truly humble, guys, for real. It means a lot. Much respect to all you guys out there, man, for subscribing, liking the videos, commenting, all that stuff, guys. Thank you, man. Shout out to all you guys out there. This channel's nothing without you guys. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, Michael Jordan raising the IQ of the players around him. This is what we want to focus on in this video. Now, I've told you guys many, many times, and many of you guys know this, Michael Jordan is known, right, for maximizing the players around him. I've told you guys, right, we know Michael Jordan has done more with less than anyone in history, guys. Those are just the facts. This is not me as a Michael Jordan fan saying this. this is not my opinion. This is not a narrative, a lie. Michael Jordan has done more with less in the history of the NBA. No one's won more championships with less than Michael Jordan. No, not even Bill Russell, guys. Bill Russell won 11 championships, man, and he had some other guys there with him. There's no takeaway from Bill Russell. I told you he's one of the greatest, man. You could say he's the greatest. But when we talk about winning more with less, Michael Jordan did that. Six championships with literally one active All-Star his entire uh, time that he won. Just takes away nothing from any of the other players that were on those teams. But Michael Jordan doing more with less. Those are the facts, guys. So when we think about that aspect of Michael Jordan, right, that's him maximizing his teammates. Remember, a lot of these guys, I've done videos on this. A lot of the guys on the Chicago Bulls, guys, were journeymen. They were other guys. That's what they were, the other guys. They were journeymen and role players. And there was nothing wrong ever with it. There was never everything, anything wrong with being a role player back when I was growing up. Now, all of a sudden, to be a role player is sometime, somehow now a knock. Or it's, it's, it's frowned upon. Or people like look down on being a called a role player or being a role player. Whereas back in my days, to be a role player, like I said, to have a role on a championship team and to play that role and, and, and fill that role, that was valuable. You guys were valued, man. We remember the John Paxson, the BJ Armstrongs, the Cliff Levinstons, the Craig Hodges, the Ron Harpers, the Tony Kukos, the, the Steve Kerrs, the Luke Longleys, the, the Brian Williams. Right, we remember all these guys, the Scott Burrells and the Bob Hansons, the Judd Bushlers. Right, we remember all these guys because they played a role and they were valuable to the team. So when we think about Michael Jordan, like I said, maximizing the players around him. I've told you guys what Michael Jordan raised the confidence level of all of those other guys, the Scottie Pippins, the Horace Grants, by being a big brother to a lot of these guys, right, and holding them to that standard, right. So when we talk about the standard, right, I'm always telling you guys. He held the Chicago Bulls to a standard of excellence in practice. You've heard these guys say, man, the practices were harder than games sometimes because of the way that there was, the intensity, right, of the practices, right? Michael Jordan always wanted the Bulls to be focused and understanding what the task was, was to win a championship. So the details mattered. This is where Michael Jordan raises the IQ of the players around him, right? When we think about always being focused and focusing on those details, holding his teammates to that standard, that increases, right, and raises their IQ. It helps them understand the game better and understand what they're trying to do, what the mission is, what they're trying to get accomplished out there on the court, right? The game plan, the day, the week by week, the day to day game plan from whatever game, whatever team they're playing, right? To focus on these things and to always be thinking about the execution. When you think about the Chicago Bulls led by Michael Jordan, you never remember any times, or I don't at least remember any times during that stretch where you looked at the Bulls and you thought they were beating themselves. Where you're like, damn, man, the Bulls are just beating themselves right now. And they didn't win because they beat themselves. Or they made some really bad mistakes. 
Yes, if the Bulls make mistakes, absolutely. They're not perfect. Did they lose games because they made mistakes down the stretch or they folded up or whatever the case may be, right? They they might have turned the ball over. You know, maybe they had a charge or something like that or the shot clock ran down on them. Absolutely, man. It happens to all the great teams, right? All throughout NBA's history. But it's the consistency of those moments that I'm always telling you guys about. And I rarely remember the Chicago Bulls ever beating themselves in a series, in a playoff series or an NBA Finals. Obviously, they're 6-0 for a reason, Michael Jordan, right? Because they never beat themselves. They weren't going to fold up down the stretch. More often than not, you were going to have to beat the Chicago Bulls. This is what made them so formidable. This is why teams struggle to beat them. The, the Utah Jazz, the, the Seattle Suns, the Phoenix Suns, all these great teams that they play in the finals. When we talk about Michael Jordan raising his level of play, that's what we're alluding to. Not beating yourself, right? Michael Jordan's teammates never making those boneheaded blunders down the stretch of games, right, to cost them a championship. This goes to the IQ of those guys, knowing what they were doing out there, being prepared. I always tell you guys, Michael Jordan had his teammates prepared for the moments. So there were no blunders out there, right, of epic proportions that you remember in your mind to this day. You don't think about any of those things in an NBA Finals, right? You think about John Paxson coming through with the shot, right? You think about uh, Steve Kerr coming through with the shot, right? You think about the plays of these other guys made, right? You think about the Scottie Pippen contributions, right? And the Horace Grant contributions, Dennis Rodman, right? Tony Kukoc, right? The Luke Longleys, the Bill Cartwrights, right? You remember these guys, the guys coming off the bench, right? You remember the contributions these guys made. You don't remember these guys being like, oh yeah, remember 1992, man, when so-and-so cost them that game because of the blunder and it cost them a championship? You don't remember these things. There's no series you could point to where the Chicago Bulls beat themselves, this is what made them so hard to beat. You had to beat them. And to beat them means you had to outperform Michael Jordan. And that's what made it hard. I told you these guys could not get to the level that Michael Jordan would raise to. So in the NBA Finals, when Magic Johnson was balling out of control and the Lakers were a good team, Michael Jordan took it to another level. In 1992, when the Portland Trailblazers, who were a deeper team than the Bulls, came in there the second time, right, in three years in the NBA Finals, Michael Jordan, when they challenged him, sagging off him, forcing him to shoot the threes, forcing him to shoot the jumpers, he took the challenge and destroyed them in game one, right? It was Michael Jordan raising his level of play over Clyde Drexler. The same thing in 93, where the Bulls and the Phoenix Suns, I always tell you guys, scored the same amount of points, guys, 640 points apiece. The difference being Michael Jordan's 41 points a game, raising his level of play over a Charles Barkley, raising up over a Gary Payton and a Sean Kemp, raising up over Carl Malone and John Stockton. The flu game, all of these things, the closeout in game six of 98. This is what we remember. You don't remember the Bulls beating themselves and you guys remember like, oh man, the Bulls, they just couldn't get out of their own way in that series. Michael Jordan had his teammates prepared. These guys were ready for the moments all of those practices, him yelling at them, right? Holding them to that standard, right? Telling them, if you guys don't want to play that way, then don't play that way. But if you're going to be in the Chicago Bulls, this is how we play. This is what it's about. And the standard was upheld for Michael Jordan. Not from Phil Jackson, guys. It was Michael Jordan. He was the leader. He was the enforcer. He enforced the way the Bulls were going to practice. He enforced the way they were going to play. And he enforced these guys on the basketball court. He... He had their back. You guys know that. Without Michael Jordan there having some of these guys back, the Scotty Pippins, the Horace Grants, the Bulls are not where they are, right? Having these guys back, like I said, giving them the confidence, maximizing them, but also raising their IQ by having them prepared for the moments, right? By having them know the game plan, know what they're doing out there, never making those blunders. They never did. They were always ready. That goes to Michael Jordan and the greatness, the leadership of him and the Chicago Bulls, all his teammates, their work ethics, their hard work that they put in to always be ready. Whenever Michael Jordan needed them, they were ready, guys. So you guys know the deal, man. Remember, when people talk about making your teammates better and, and things like that, a lot of times they talk about stats or they talk about on-court play and things like that. We get all that. But when we talk about Michael Jordan and making your teammates better, some of the all-time greats that made their teammates better, it was the off the course so that we didn't see the time in practice, right? The film study, right? Making these guys understand what they're watching on the film, making them pay attention, holding them to that standard. 
If there's no one there to uphold the standing and guys are lollygagging, they're not really paying attention, they're not really prepared. Right? The Bulls are prepared, guys. The only time I ever saw the Bulls like not be prepared almost or be rattled was game one of the 1991 NBA Finals. That's the only time that I saw Michael Jordan's teammates. They were nervous out there. You could tell they were completely nervous in the moment. Pippen, Grant, Cartwright, Paxson, all these guys, you could tell they were nervous out there. But it was Michael Jordan right, who galvanized them, the leadership, having them, pushing them, having them prepared, that they never folded up for an entire series. It never lasted for a series. Maybe they lost a game here. They lost a game there. They made some bad plays here or there. But once again, they never made the consistent blunders or things to cost them wins. You guys know the teams in NBA history. There have been great teams in NBA history that have been known for beating themselves or not being able to get out of their own way. Whatever the case may be, whatever ailed them. Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls, they never had that problem. You had to go out there and beat them. They weren't going to beat themselves, guys. That goes to the IQ of Michael Jordan and the IQ of his teammates, him making them better, helping them understand the game. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.